Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another thing where I talk about things. Today, uh, uh, just myself, where I'm actually going on vacation soon, I'm gonna, well, kind of a vacation. I'm going out to go see Kenza, I'm going out to Spain, and, uh, and yes, it will be fun. I'm, a, I'm terrified of planes, especially ones over the ocean and cracked. Uh, I, re I do read cracked pretty regularly, usually uh, every time I go to work during my lunch break. I will, will read from my phone with one hand and then eat with the other. And uh, they, it has freaked me out because they did a article where they were talking about like, oh, this little girl went down at a plane crash and they hit the ocean and then she was thrown from the plane and then everyone had to drown. And I was like, oh, good. That combines two of my biggest fears. I have a, I have a fear of heights and I have a fear of drowning. So it's always really comforting to know that, oh, yes, if a plane went down in the ocean that I would, uh, I would have to experience my fear of heights first and then I would have to drown. So uh, that was that was not real pleasing before my long overseas trip, but uh, but believe it or not, although this may sound crazy, I actually sat down and I looked up plane crashes and all the statistics that they tell you, where they're like you're more likely to you're more likely to die from falling out of your bed than you are to die in a plane crash. That doesn't comfort me for some reason, but what did was looking up actual plane crashes and seeing like what do they commonly crash for and like who's crash like. Uh, you find it's mostly Cessna airplanes, and actually I've experienced this. I, I, when I was doing survey work, I was working at the uh, downtown airport, and the downtown airport takes service from a lot of smaller planes. They also take service from uh, the government. We had Michelle Obama actually came down to our airport once, and that was a big deal. I was not on the field for that. But uh, what they did is they, as I recall, they got that plane out there, and they put up like... A bunch of shield you know they went out of their way to make sure that it was all just you know completely utterly protected they pretty much cleared the whole place and uh, and it was kind of that, that's kind of neat <clears throat> of course you don't do that like you wouldn't do that at the big mci airport because you couldn't just freeze like the area and just be like all right nobody land any planes for a little while but uh most of the time you find that planes will crash on takeoff and landing which i'm a little bit more comfortable with it's really just my it's really just my irrational fears that i have the most concern with so uh yeah, <laughs> rather a morbid, morbid thought, and I'm not quite done with the morbidity for today's personal time episode. And I actually had, uh, I saw a news article as well today. I'm doing a bunch of videos in advance. This is this, the personal time videos are the ones that I put off because I can kind of do them a little bit quicker. These are usually my like, uh, I've got stuff to do today. I've got work later today, but I can sit down and do a personal time video before I go. Or, or uh, it'll be something like, I've got this window, you know, Alan's home for a little while, we can do a thing. And uh, so these I put off because I can do them, I can do one, review it, edit it, make sure it's all okay, and then do another, and then be, you know. So I'm actually, I'm, I'm pretty well ahead of schedule. I'm really excited because of the way that things have been going. Uh, for this past two weeks or so, we've had kind of a steady incline in viewership. It's dropped off a little bit uh, at the end of this week. But it might pick up, and if it continues in an upward trend, then that's really good. That means that we're picking up more viewers from the stuff that we've done. And uh, it could be because I've, I've been really regular with updates. Because it takes about two months to get people into a habit. And so if I've been updating really regularly for two months, and maybe I have, then that could mean that maybe people are starting to get in a habit of coming to see the website. And that means that we get new people, and they kind of like it, and they stick around. Then we get other people who are just used to regularly checking in. And, uh, and it grows. It's much better for, for growth and everything. So I don't want to have a week where, where there's nothing on there because it breaks the habit. And, uh, and then, you know, and that's not good. And so, so that's, why, that's why if you ever start your own web series, actually, it's really important to be punctual. You notice that even really good web comics or, or web series, if they're not, if they're not real regular, uh, unless they go viral, they tend not to build up as many viewers. And it's for that reason is because uh, if you're regular, then people get in the habit of checking because it's regular. You know, they always go like, I go, go see, you know, whatever. It's like every Sunday, this comic updates. And so I go every Sunday because that's what I've done for, uh, for months and months and months. So, uh, yes, yes. But anyway, though, I've been working. Uh, I ran my voice ragged, uh, actually trying to voice act. That's the hardest thing is like, uh, I will just scream like Peyton for like two full episodes. I sat down, I like woke up in the morning, worked until like late at night, uh, and I've got all the New Vegas Let's Plays taken care of, uh, and, and I should be, we should not miss a beat on that. I've got Monday Music taken care of, this, this Monday song will be interesting. The one after that I had a commission uh, that I didn't, I don't know what happened with the guy, but, but I lost, uh, I haven't heard contact from him. He asked me to, to make a commission 
and I made it, and I know, I show that it's been downloaded, so I know that he's had a look at it, but he, it's been a few weeks, and I haven't heard back from him, so I may not get paid for it, but I'll, that one I've just been hanging on to, because, I, like, I've, I had others to do, I actually had a really good month for commissions on that, uh, uh, this past month, because I just, like, you might notice, I was like, today's is a, is a commission, today's is a commission, today's is a commission, so I had a few commissions, uh, they finally dried up, but, but I had a number of them. And, uh, but that's, that's one that I didn't get any word back. I never heard if the guy, who, I never heard if he said it was okay or not. So I just held on to it. And so I've got, I've got Monday music all lined up and everything else. Uh, and yeah, hopefully we, we should, we should be good. This took me about three weeks of work though to try and get this far ahead. And, uh, I'm very proud. I could, could be good. Maybe I could, over the course when I come back, maybe I could work just a little bit harder and then just gradually get ahead on everything and then that would be neat that would be great then I would have some wiggle room I could maybe do some other stuff and then, yeah so <clears throat> anyway though so the news the other the the, uh, the more morbid news I was just talking about one of my friends I have a good couple of friends in the Marines actually I, I used to in fact know a lot of military nuts uh, I mean I, I you know I don't, I don't know why but I have a couple of friends in the Marines and uh, they were talking about they might cut funding and benefits to the Marines and that's one of those things where I read that today and uh, the politics on that is a little bit it's a little bit worrying that's kind of one of those rather portentous bits of news that when you hear that sort of thing you you really kind of want to worry just a little bit because there are two groups that that absolutely should not be disenfranchised and that is it's the police and the military and we've got stuff going on right now. I mean, wherever, whatever you think about current wage politics or anything like that, the truth is is that there have been a number of strikes and protests going on. We've got, uh, you know, the fast food strikes are one, but we've also had airport strikes. One of the one of the ones that's actually rather important is we've had strikes with Lockheed Martin, and that's important because Lockheed Martin they're making the fighter craft. And one of the reasons why our fighter craft have gotten so expensive is because of the strikes and delays from the strikes at Lockheed Martin. Is these people they get angry? They're not getting paid enough. They're not, and this is not good either. When you're talking about like air airline services and stuff like that, where it's like we're not getting paid enough, and we're disgruntled and we don't want to do these jobs for this low of pay. That's not good because those like airplanes are like not a thing that you want to have people be disgruntled with while they're working. So. Uh, anyway, though, the, the long the delays at Lockheed Martin are like making the airplanes much more expensive because Lockheed Martin just offsets the cost of the delays onto the taxpayers, and so that's how that works. So that's all that's all kind of like civil, though. And while that's bad, it's not good. It's not real promising. It's it's not as scary as when you start reading about your government putting in wage cuts like you're seeing this kind of thing where people are getting upset about low wages and then you see that your government is proposing to cut wages and benefits to the military and when how can I I mean I was doing some reading for Soul Reaver 2 and I can't remember why I went and I looked up the Russian Revolution and, and with the Tsar and everything. But one of the things that's really consistent you find in revolutions, it, if like revolutions get bad or if things go get to be a mess, a lot of times what you find out is that the military is disenfranchised. Or the institutions, the police and the military become disenfranchised. Like the Tsar, Peter, lost control of his military. Things, they got to hate him and so things got bad and the government relied on those people to keep the peace and and they said you know i think the most adequate way to keep the peace would be to support this this these protests these revolutions and i was also reading about ukraine and they were talking about like one of the reasons why the ukrainian revolts got off the ground was because they had angry spetsnaz veterans in the protests and so what happened was you got a bunch of people with no combat experience and then you mix them in with people who had a ton of combat experience and you think like military specialists you give them a handful of several thousand people and you know sure they can't take over the country but they can turn like a protest that normally would have been dispersed by rioters into a protest that actually like locks down a whole city block and can't be shaken loose. Because you really, you really can't underestimate, I've known a couple cops 
And the most, the worst horror stories I ever hear about police work is when they deal with veterans. It's one of those things that's like, there's always two things. A veteran is, a veteran is combat trained and he's used to like gunfire and stuff like that. Or more used to it than a normal person. And the second thing is that the police are not expecting the veteran, but the veteran is expecting the police. So it's never a good situation. It's just not good to, to propose a plan to like, like, oh, well, we'll just cut their benefits. And the rhetoric that they're using for it is very bad. They're talking about like, well, we live in an entitled society. You know, they don't, they're like, the, the Marines don't need these benefits. It's just like, oh. Uh, so right or left, however you may feel about the wage arguments and everything like that. If you're the type who writes to your congressman, I mean, it's something to look into because maybe it's not a really well-supported debate, but just, just I had a military friend who posted about it because he's obviously concerned about it. He gets his benefits and pay from the military. He's in there currently. Uh, that might be one that you might want to just contact them about and say, you know, I uh, feel like maybe the military should continue to receive adequate compensation as well as possible. Don't cut funding to that sort of thing. That's not a good idea at all. Uh, it's never a good idea. I mean, I have I have my own political leaning. Some people feel like I lean too far left, and I understand some people want to shrink the government because they feel like the government is pro a, a, a problem. Other people want to increase regulations because they feel like there's not enough regulations. There's probably a mix of both. It depends on what perspective you're holding and where you're where you're looking at the problem from. Because there's, I, I'm positive that when you read about the government, you read about all the all the impotent stuff that they do. It's it's really easy to see like yeah, there's a lot of impotent stuff that needs to be fixed. But, uh, but right, like I say, right or left, um, two groups that should never be disenfranchised, that should always receive adequate pay and benefits, are the police and the military. So if that sort of thing does concern you, I, I would advise just looking into it. Maybe, like I said, if you'd like to write to your congressman, maybe just write to your congressman and say, hey, uh, don't, don't, don't stop paying those people. That's not, that's not wise. So, uh, yes, anyway, though. Aside from that, so uh, that is that is the less happy news. That is the dar the darker news. Uh, aside from that, though, I've also got uh, some happy news. I got an email from a fan, a guy named Malcolm, who's trying to start his own. He's he's trying to get his business off the ground. It is called ArtCorgi.com, and uh, he sent me a, a thing. And he goes, I really don't have any money to uh, to support you guys right now, but would you like a commission from my website? And so uh, I got a commission from an artist uh, going by the name Black Smiley, and I requested Henry Kissinger on an Archaeopteryx, and it, with a tag uh, tied to the, uh, the Archaeopteryx tail, it says, uh, To be absolutely certain of anything, you must know nothing about it or everything about it. And so uh, Henry Kissinger, with his hands up, very happy, very excited. This is available for free. I am giving this away. You guys can just download it right off of the website or you can take it from uh, Tumblr or wherever. I'll just post it wherever it is that they'll let me post images. And uh, and yes, that will be fun, fun for you guys. You can, I don't know what you can do with it, but you can use it as like a background or you can post it online or do whatever you want. It's free, free to the public. Uh, uh, Yep, that's how that is. Although, if you are very, very business savvy, very, uh, very password thinking, and you would like to make sure that no one can steal uh, your very important work once you've downloaded it from us, I also have the Donut Steal Watermarked Edition with donuts watermarked all over that. I asked that very specifically because I knew that our gold platinum uh, viewers would would very much be thrilled by the prospect of preventing piracy by having an image that is functionally worthless to everyone. So, uh, yes, that is what I have done, and and uh, that's artcorgi.com if you guys want to check that sort of thing out. Uh, they, they're trying to, like, they, what, they, what they are hoping that is that look at people who want their own profile pictures and things like that. But they do art, on, art for hire, art for hire, if you want to check that out. Oh, yes, uh... And finally, our final thing for the day is I talked many moons ago about uh, prions. I said I would explain prions a bit. And I started to get into it, and then I kind of abandoned it for the role-playing thing. And the reason I gave up on it was because biochemistry, it was one of those where everything up until that, like organic chemistry I could explain, and it wasn't too bad, but organic, or bio, blah, blah, biochemistry was a little bit harder because you need a little bit more prior experience to kind of get the idea behind the structures and everything. So I was going to go on about how proteins are formed, and I think that I'll just kind of have to be a little bit more direct about it, not worry too much. But basically there are different structures of chemicals, and there's there's primary structures, secondary structures, tertiary structures, and so on. And it, it works like this, is that all chemicals are made up out of certain compounds, right? Like methane is uh, CH4, I think, unless I'm remembering wrong. That's one of those that uh, any any actual chemist would slap me for being like, well, I'm not really sure. but uh, 
it's one of those things I'm never certain of myself unless I double check before I do it. And I'm just doing this just off the top of my head. So uh, yeah, uh, methane, I'm pretty sure is CH4. And anyway, uh, that's very simple. You know, there's really only one confirmation that, that that particular chemical can have. But as you get to larger and larger thing, you get these long carbon chains and the carbon is all connected and then there's stuff that branches off the carbon and you get like oxygen, you know, phosphorus, you get things that are just attached and they do all kinds of other important things. And uh, and that's kind of the, the deal that you get. But then it folds up, you know, and they form, they can form rings or they can form like a chain. It depends on really kind of how how the compound is made. And this is one of the more complex aspects of organic organic chemistry is that when you make your chemical, you want to know what it actually looks like. And this is why we get into like uh, methamphetamines, when you buy them from the pharmacy, are safe. But when you buy them from like a meth dealer, they're not safe because the meth dealer doesn't have sophisticated enough equipment to really look at the purity of the compound and see like, uh, I've got a hexane ring here, and then I've got like, a, oh, this is a pentagonal ring, or pentane, it's a pentane ring. This is a pentane ring, and then this is a... So that's... Uh, Oh, plus two, one of the reactants that's really common in a lot of chemical synthesis is chlorine. So, you know, if you buy from a meth dealer, there's a good chance that they didn't get all the chlorine out of the illegal substance. So that's why you really want to avoid that kind of stuff. It's just sort of like it's it's not just that abusing the drug is bad for you. It's also that the drugs are really impure and they really mess you up. And uh, and it's not like the impurities are, are like just sheer poison. So, yeah, uh... Anyway, though, so that's that's another aspect. But finally, when you get into these really long, really complex chains, they start to do things and they actually like fold up on themselves because they've all kind of got to fit in a little space, and they don't just they don't just like sit around in the long, long chain. I mean, not normally they could in theory, but the odds of that are really, really poor because what you get is that each atom has its own what they call electronegativity, which means that it has a certain desire. For, for electrons of a sort. And so like you might have an oxygen attached to a carbon, and in theory this might be a neutral chemical. I mean, uh, this, this would not be, it would be like carbon and some other, it would be like two hydrogen, one oxygen. But, uh, but anyway though, so in theory this would be a, a neutral molecule, but the oxygen actually is not totally satisfied. It wants just a little bit more uh, negative stuff to balance it out. And so it won't really form new bonds with any other chemicals, but what it will do is it'll sort of, you know, want to be near positively charged things, like hydrogen atoms. So when you get these long chains and they start to fold out, fold up, you find that the oxygen atoms will kind of go towards, you know, this, this sort of thing or this, you know, this atom or this compound. And so it all folds up in a way that kind of satisfies all the atoms in the thing so that they're all kind of close to their neighbors that they like to be by. You've got your, you know, all your, all your chemical and electronegative interactions are all happy and everything is fairly stable. And then you have a compound, you have a protein that's folded up in a way that uh, would take a little bit of energy to pry apart because it's very happy where it is, it's very stable. But uh, it's, it's not perfect, is when you form your protein, there are a lot of different ways that the protein can fold up and it's a big area of study in biochemistry to try and figure out all the different ways that a protein could theoretically fold. There are uh, ones that have the highest yield and then ones that don't fold up correctly are often assisted by enzymes to make them fold, fold correctly. <clears throat> or they can be, but uh, when the folding goes wrong though, you get what are called prions. And this is, this is a type of folding that is actually just disastrous, because what happens is you get a protein that folds up, and it folds up incorrectly, but then it's also incredibly stable. And for some reason, what this protein will then do is when it goes and it comes in contact with other proteins, it will cause the other proteins to unfold, and then those proteins will become bad proteins as well. And so they bounce around like this and it spreads like a disease, but it's actually not like a bacteria or a virus because it's a totally different method. And it's just your natural proteins folding incorrectly. They, they fold messed up, like they fold inside out or something to that effect. And, and uh, it's actually the cause of mad, mad cow disease. And so that's why when you eat mad cow disease, you're not really ingesting any bacteria, you're not ingesting a virus, there is no cure. You are just taking on proteins that then unfold all your proteins and turn them into crap. So it makes your brain rot from the inside out and you go crazy. Uh, in fact, these prions, they're so baffling that you can't really destroy them. You can boil the stupid things in urea and they just reform back into prions. So we don't really know how to get rid of them. 
But uh, anyway though, that is the subject of prions and protein folding, a rather more direct method than what I originally was going to try, which caused me to derail and to talk about role-playing stuff. But the role-playing stuff is fun. So I've talked about uh, disease, plane crashes, uh, military revolts, um, Yes, a rather, a rather grim, grim personal time with Craig. Next time I will talk instead about Star Wars role-playing. I have never had a good Star Wars role-playing uh, episode. I've had ones that came almost close to decent, but almost all of them were just permeated with terrible, terrible, wrong, bad, not good ideas for jamming, and I will tell that story. I've had at least three games, and they were all terrible. They're all kind of interesting. So that will be next time. I will catch you guys later.